session. Okay, so thank you for coming to the second session of the Dreaming Out Loud Food Business Workshop series. I'm going to wait just a couple of minutes to get started so that we can get um, a few more participants in here today. Um, and then we will get started. So I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds. Thank you. All right, I'm just gonna wait uh, like four more minutes to get started because usually people start kind of logging in right at three. Uh, so just maybe like two more, but three more minutes. So 3.05, we'll get started, thank you. I'm just going to wait two more minutes and then we will get started. Um, I do recognize some of your names here right now, so I'm really happy to see you for the second session. Um, and we're going to be talking about developing your proof of concept um, and food business funding. So how to get the money that you need in order to open your food business or grow your food business. So we will get started in just a maybe one more minute. I'm gonna wait till 3.05 and then we'll begin. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started just for the sake of time. Um, we will end this webinar today at around 4.30, um, maybe a little bit earlier than that. Um, we're going to be talking about proof of concept um, and how to get money, how to get the money that you need to be able to start your business. So just let me know if you have any questions along the way. 
and I would be happy to answer them uh, because this is very, it's, a, it's an interesting question that I get a lot. Um, people are always asking me how they can get money to open their businesses. So it is a very competitive um, thing. It's a very competitive situation when you are looking to get funding for your business. And the reason it's so competitive is clearly because nothing good comes for free. You know, it's it's people are putting their money into a um, basically into your concept because they trust you. They trust that whatever you come up with is going to be successful and it's um, a better place for them to put in their investment as really at the end of the day, when they're investing in a business, they're investing in you, the business owner. So I will, um, I'm gonna share the presentation and talk to you a little bit about, um, about how I manage um, to get investors for different concepts. Um, so thank you so much for coming to the Dreaming Out Loud Food Business Workshop series. This is the second session. Um, you can find the rest of the sessions in the uh, Food Business Workshop series by clicking on the Eventbrite link that has been included in your chat. Um, whenever you click on that Eventbrite link, you're gonna see all of the other upcoming classes. And I really recommend that you go to all of them. Uh, this is what it looks like. So make sure that if you have not registered in the Eventbrite, you do because you can get all of these different um, all of the different subjects. So we're right now in um, in the funding part of it. So it's uh, how do you get um, how to develop your proof of concept, and then we're going to have the next one, which is research and development for an innovative menu. Then we're going to talk about hiring and training for food businesses, uh, how to work with the manufacturer, and how to approach investors. So today I'm going to focus a little bit more on proof of concept so that by the time you're at how do I approach investors, you're ready to go. And what I want to do and how to you approach your investors is hopefully have a few of you give us your business pitches and do a pitch competition. But I'm going to feel it out to see if we're going to be ready for that by October 13th. But um, this is the schedule. So definitely sign up for this because um because that's how you'll know when when it when these programs will take place. So now I'm going to share with you a little bit more about the presentation. Um, and then as I do this, I'm I am going to begin by talking a little bit about Nourish DC and what's going on with um with this program and why we decided to do it right now. So Nourish DC is a collaborative that was created in 2021 in partnership with the DC government. Um, there is a grant application that will open in late October. Um, I do recognize your name, so I know that you've probably, you've heard this before, but I'm gonna repeat it for anyone watching the recording who hasn't um, heard it. So Nourish DC granted a total of $530,000 to 10 businesses in 2021. Uh, this time they're doing it again. Um, they're, the grant pool is $500,000. So in 2022, they're offering a grant pool of twenty or, or $500,000 and the grant will range from $10,000 to $50,000. So you can apply for anywhere between 10 to $50,000 if you meet their criteria. Um, the exact date will post um, later on this month once they know when exactly they're going to open it for applications, but you'll be able to follow these links to be able to um, make sure that you're getting updated information. So I'm going to actually um, copy paste just again in case you don't have the links. I'm going to copy paste them in the chat here. Um, because you need the links. So the first link that I'm gonna put in is the um, grant application updates that will be on the Nourish DC website. 
And then the other one that I'm going to put in is where you can go to get updates on any other future grants. So the first one I'm putting here is just so you can get some updates. So this will help you get the updates for this grant that's coming up. And then this other link is going to be so that you can get updates on future grant. So this one is for the future. So those two resources are very, very useful and helpful. Um, we do constantly have, um, we have grant opportunities. And many of you are always asking me about what the, um, what the grants are, where if, if they can access a grant or access a loan. So make sure that you're taking advantage of this opportunity. It is very nice to see that um, grants are, grant opportunities are opening back up again in the food industry for DC. Um, during COVID, that was a very difficult, um, it was a difficult time for us in the industry. So we have had a lot of businesses that have shifted or that paused for business and then have restarted, um, or even new concepts that have happened or that have been created. So if you need to know what are some of the criteria to be able to qualify for this grant um, is that you need to, let me go back, where is it? There we go. So you need to uh, be physically located in DC, uh, preferences for wards five, seven, and eight. You have to have a food business, but I'm assuming that if you're here at the webinar, you have a food business. Uh, you must be in business and generating revenue for more than six months. So some of you have been generating revenue for more than six months. So that is something that might qualify you. And then you must have earned more than $10,000 of revenue in the past 12 months. Um, and then there will be an additional round of funding launched in the spring, specifically focused for funding cold storage and refrigeration. So there's going to be a whole nother round of funding in the spring if you need a walk-in or some sort of refrigeration unit. So just also be mindful of that. Um, so if you have a brick and mortar, that's really helpful, especially because walk-ins cost about $10,000. Um, so that is the Nourish DC information. Um, you have the link here in your chat. Don't forget to look into it. Even if you don't think you qualify, you should still learn about the criteria because the whole goal uh, behind these workshops is to help you set yourself up for success. So if you don't qualify right now, it doesn't mean that you won't qualify a year from now. I mean, if you see they did 2021, it was $530,000. In 2022, they are putting $500,000. So chances are that they're gonna do it for 2023, right? So make sure that you're prepared and that by the time it, it relaunches and they do the grant cycle again, you are ready to go and you have everything you need in place. So just because you don't qualify right now doesn't mean you can't prepare for the future. Um, and then I wanna talk about Open Access DC. Um, a few of you already know about Open Access DC, uh, but I'm gonna speak about it anyway um, because we are gonna be launching this is September 30th. So September 30th, we're gonna be launching the portal that will give you a lot of um, checklists and the guidance that you need in order to open your food business. Um, this is something that was developed by Aspen Institute's Food and Society team. And we're going to be hosting it at the DC SBDC website. So it's gonna go on the DC Small Business Development Center website. Uh, the host center is, is Howard University. And this is a great checklist because you, what you're going to be able to do with the checklist is navigate how, you know, basically what do you need in order to open your, um, your food business. So I'm going to show you right now, just very quickly, uh, but that's the portal. Now, if you need any information from this portal before the 30th of September, just let me know via email. And you have to email me because 
I'm just now finishing up catching up with all of my old emails, not old emails, but the emails of whenever I was out of town and trying to keep up. So some of you have already gotten um, some, some emails responses from me, but I'm gonna have them done by Monday. And some of you have asked for this information. So um, Open Access DC helps you plan your business. And this is specific to Washington, D.C. And they're launching in Washington, D.C., but it's going to be in every major city around the country. Um, so it is divided by restaurant, cafe, catering, food truck, or private label. And just by looking at the participants here today, it looks like most of you are private labels, um, like snacks and desserts and um things like that. So whenever you click on private label, it's gonna tell you what exactly you can use or what you need in order to um, launch your private label company. So I really like this, this portal. It tells you what permits and licenses you need. It tells you different business structures so that you can decide how you wanna register your business. It gives you some tips on how to run the business uh, from the point of sales to hiring. Um, and so I think that this is a wonderful portal. It gives you really all of the checklist of things that you need in order to open that particular type of food business. Then if you have a restaurant, cafe, or a food truck, or a catering company, it does the same thing. I just clicked on private label because I'm just looking at the participants here. And most of the participants here have um, snacks. So if you have snacks or, or desserts or something like this, then you would just go here. But all of these are really, really great checklists. And one of my favorite things here is the business plan. So today, the title of what we're talking about today is developing your proof of concept and food business funding. So how do you fund your food business? You have a few different ways of funding your food business. Um, I really like to fund my food businesses myself. The reason I fund, I always have funded the business myself is because then I can retain 100% ownership of my business. Uh, that's important to me. And I would rather a lot of the time apply for a grant or a loan to help me in hiring someone that can help me. So it's a, to be my key player, or my key, key person without necessarily going into a business partnership. Um, but you can also strategize with somebody that you really trust, that you want to be your business partner on how you will divide the financial responsibility. But that's such a big, big um, uh, issue, not issue, but it's a big commitment. When you're, when you're partnering with somebody, it really is like, um, it's a very important commitment. It's like a marriage. You're basically, um, you know, committing to, to somebody that you will both fit, feel like your certain responsibilities for the long haul. And I have experienced a few partnership agreements that have not worked out for people. And a big reason is because they didn't have a very delineated operating agreement to really like hash out exactly who was responsible for what. But one big thing that causes a little bit of conflict is, is money. You know, money is always something that, um, that I guess it's, it's a very important aspect of your business for sure. And I like to create my businesses typically with if I have my own idea, I will create the business with my own money first and develop a proof of concept so that I can then go to get a grant or go get a loan or go um, to an investor. Uh, when you're dealing with an investor, the negotiation is very um, particular. And that's also why I usually recommend the DC Bar Pro Bono program because the DC Bar Pro Bono program, they can help you create your, um, or, or at least guide you legally in the operating agreement part of your, your negotiation, uh, because you're going to need good attorneys 
to create your operating agreement, to create how you're going to divide the responsibilities, uh, both financially and operationally, for your business. Um, but I'm going to not go super into that right now. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. And we're just going to get started with how do you approach an investor? So whenever you're getting food business funding and you are, are, are needing money to grow your business or you need money to buy initial inventory. And I like to try to make it myself, but if you do not have the, the financial ability to do that and you really wanna start your business, you have to approach an investor. And the first thing I do is I create a checklist of people that I believe would invest in my concept. So that is different for everybody. Um, and it, man, it, and it, it really depends on your relationship with people. Um, I tend to really nurture my business relationships. So I have people who would invest in concepts, but it doesn't come for free. It happened over years and years of networking and talking and proving, basically proving myself or proving, you know, that I knew what I was talking about. And if you're if approaching an investor or a potential investor, it's very healthy to write a list of who that investor might be and who would that investor be and why do they want to um, invest in your concept and what do they bring to the table for you? Are they somebody who understands the food business? Are they somebody who has connections that they can um, help you with so that you can grow your business more effectively? Um, so when you approach an investor, uh, you already know who you're going to approach because you have them on your list of people and you already have a relationship with them. Um, that investor will want to be given a few things. Number one, they want you to tell them what your concept is in a clear and concise way. And the reason is because if you are vague, if you do not tell them exactly how you're going to make money, you haven't exercised the business plan in your mind. It means you haven't written a plan or you don't have a plan and it's going to build distrust on their side. So the first thing that you need to get an investor is to present your, con your concept with clarity. That's why we're here today is to help get you the resources that you need to be able to be building your business plan. Um, I've already given you guys this book information, but I'm going to recommend it again. If you need help writing a business plan, the Lean Business Planning Book by Tim Barry is a really good book because it tells you what certain um, subject matters that business um, or that investors need to know, or it tells you what um, what lenders want to know. So really, at the end of the day, the investors want to know how you're going to run your business and not only how you're going to run your business, but is it going to make money? So you have to be very clear. You don't want to be vague at all. If you're not prepared, don't approach them. Wait until you're prepared because you only have really one shot. Um, once you ask, it's going to be difficult to ask again. So present your concept with clarity. The next one is approach your investor in advance. Uh, this is really important. I've seen a lot of people approach their investors like two months before they, they want to open their business. And nobody makes financial decisions that quickly. You have to understand that investors have, have saved up their money a lot of the time. If they have that cash, it's because they earned it in some way and they're trying to strategize where they're going to put it to have the, the, uh, the safest investment that they can make. And if they're investing in you, I, I would say that that's a positive investment, but they need time to decide if it's a viable business. And so if they don't have the time to look at it, to read it through, they're not gonna invest because it's gonna create distrust. 
Um, and also remember, investors are busy people. So they might have their whole month mapped out already. They might have their whole schedules already set months in advance. So they might have to push this as a low priority item on their to-do list. If they still care about it, but it's not the on the top of their to-do list. And understanding that and having that humility to say, you know what? I'm not the most important person to them is important because you do want to become that most important person. But right now you're you're really approaching the investor. So you need to give them space and you need to give them time to think through the decision. And that's ultimately going to give you better results. If you try to pressure them into a decision, it might be a good idea. They might be thinking it's a good idea, but they're just going to say no. And the reason is because they're not just going to make such a decision whimsically. They want to make sure that they're making the right one. So approach your investors in advance. Now, when I say in advance, I say like, as soon as you have your business plan, give them, it's going to be months. It's not going to be a couple of days. It's going to be a few months before they're able to make a decision. So just understanding that and having the patience to continue your business as you're getting that investment deal um, is going to be very important for you. It just allows you to manage expectations. And it's like any relationship. You have to have that space and that patience to understand that not everybody operates at the same timeline. And then the next thing I do to approach an investor is that I allow them time to ask questions. Like, do you have any questions about the business plan? Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you need any more information. Um, when you have a business plan, you actually, I think it was last class or two classes ago for the other program, we were talking about um, a market, uh, a marketing plan. And something that investors usually ask about is about your business plan and it's about your market analysis. Did you find out if you have the demand for your product? So they're gonna ask you about a market analysis and they're gonna go into the financials and they're gonna make sure that your money projections make sense. And I know that you can all do this. It's something that you can definitely do. It's an achievable goal. Um, and if you don't know how, just schedule one-on-one -on -one ass technical assistance time. This is something that I have a lot of expertise in, but we have a lot of other counselors that are excellent at this, especially when they're looking at it in a point of view that is outside of the food industry, because a lot of investors will not necessarily be working in the food industry. They're gonna be people who are outside of the food industry that have a different outlook or different questions than somebody who would have understood the business industry would have. So just let us know if you have any technical assistance, if you need help with that. Now, for this Capital One grant, um, it's a great opportunity. And I will say that um, I worked with Capital One before. I've gone to the interviews that they do for people who are potentials for winning the grants. And they ask a lot of questions, but the most important question that they ask that I've noticed is, do you have a team? So that brings me to the next part, is your pitch deck. When you are approaching an investor, you should have a pitch deck. And a pitch deck is basically a slideshow, really a slideshow or a very clear document that is a summary of your business plan that will help you explain what your business is going to um, be like, how it's going to make money, um, who your customers are. Um, so it's basically the who, what, and how of what you're gonna do for your operations. Even where, I didn't put where in here, but where are you going to do business? Um, what need are you feeling in the market? Who is your customer? How big is your customer base? Um, and how will you market to them? 
how will you communicate your idea to your, your customers or your product to your customers that will make them and motivate them to purchase? Um, and how will you make a profit off of your product or service? Um, you need to profit off of every sale. So there, are, I have seen a lot of business plans where someone says that they won't profit until maybe two years in. And really, you should be profiting from, from the start. Uh, and that's why you write a business plan. So uh, they're going to watch to see, okay, are we profiting off of this operation? And will this business owner maintain the business and grow the business? Uh, very rarely does anyone want to help a biz or, or invest into a business that does not have plans to grow. And the reason is because there's only so much money um, involved in a certain size of business. So if they're going to invest, they want to make sure that they're going to make a return, that they're going to make money off of, off of helping you. So I'm going to actually share with you um, a website that I like to use for pitch decks. So when I'm building my pitch deck, I use liveplan.com. And I already showed you this before. LivePlan is a great platform. And before LivePlan, it was actually very difficult to um, write a business plan for me because I would have a, an outline. But LivePlan really puts everything in one portal. And my favorite part is how it allows me to write my financial forecasts. But the pitch deck is something that they help you do. And so you can actually get videos on how to write your pitch deck or what do people look for when you're writing, when, when they're reading your pitch deck. And then when you get started here, you can see all of the sections that it has you fill out. So it'll put you through all of the sections for your pitch deck. And that way, by the time you're finished, you can actually just download it and print it. And it will give you the right, um, the PDF version of your pitch deck. And the way that looks is, um, I'm gonna open it right now. This is not a, I didn't make this pitch deck yet, but our, I guess really it only showed you one page, so never mind. Never mind on showing you this, but now you know that you can download the pitch deck if you have one right off of here. But you really do need a pitch deck. It's more of a slideshow that shows the um, investor all of these different things. So the headline is basically, what is the business? Then you have the need in the market, how you're filling the need in the market, who are you selling to? Who's your target market? Who are your competitors? Who are you competing against? Um, and then it shows you here, funding needed. How much money do you need in order to do what you want to do to grow your business? And then it goes into sales and marketing. Where will you be selling? Um, and then here it's marketing activities is really talking about how you're gonna market your business. So what sorts of social media or even um, printed advertisements, radio advertisements, how are you getting your marketing done? How are you reaching more people? And that's one of the most important parts. Then the financials are the most important part. How will they be, um, how will you be profiting? So this is just a little example. Um, I just took it out of a, an incomplete um, business plan that I'd been working on before on life plan. And the reason I wanted to show you is just because I think it's important for you to know that that resource exists. Uh, life plan is about $30 a month. So if you have trouble writing your business plan, um, that's a great tool because it helps you through it step by step. And then if you need help, then that's when you schedule um, technical assistance. And then we can help you 
um, through it, you know. So if you need help with that, with life plan or, or the business plan, then you schedule technical assistance time and we can help you through it. But as the, the counselors for these programs, we need you to write your plan because we're helping a lot of other businesses. So it's really the business owner's job to write their own business plan or their own pitch deck. So if you need help, just schedule one-on-one -on -one time. But when you're developing your pitch deck, the most important things that they ask about is, you know, what, what is your product and why are people going to purchase it from you? And how will you market to your customers? Are you planning on doing printable flyers and then maybe mailing out catalogs or picture items with brochures or pictures of your product and giving people examples of how to purchase your product? Um, so what are you doing to get those sales? Um, the other thing that they're gonna look at is where are you getting your ingredients from and how are you getting them? Do you have a vendor? Do you have a wholesale vendor? And the reason is because you cannot always rely on uh, grocery stores, number one. And number two, grocery stores sell products at a higher price than wholesalers. So any savvy investor for a food company knows that you, as the producer, you need to have a vendor that is a wholesale vendor, someone that offers you the um, a better price, basically. And you have to make sure that they're reliable. And then is your product dependent on a certain ingredient? So if your product depends on chocolate, if you absolutely need a certain type of chocolate, are you going to be able to get it consistently? And are you, you know, because a lot of the time you might go to the store and find one kind of chocolate and then you go back and you, you don't find it again. So you need to develop a relationship with the provider of the ingredient that you really need. And they will ask, you know, is it dependent? Is your food dependent on a certain ingredient? Um, Sometimes I have come across a lot of people who are dependent on certain fruits, for example. And fruits vary depending on season. Uh, fruit, fruits and vegetables are, um, they change, they fluctuate depending on the season. There are some fruits and vegetables that are great in the summertime, they're, they're seasonal items. So if it's a seasonal item and you want to offer it all year, what are you going to do to source enough or source it in a consistent way? Uh, typically, that makes it so sometimes when people are using fresh fruits and vegetables, they have to switch over to uh, pulp or a different method of, of freezing the vegetable or something to make sure that the, the supply is consistent all the way through for their product. So you want to make sure that if you're developing a product, it's something that is not necessarily dependent on a certain ingredient. And if it is dependent on it, make sure that you have the right uh, purveyors already lined up so that when you pitch your idea and they ask you where you're buying your, your products from, you can have an answer because that's the first thing that they're going to ask. Um, there's a book that I already told you about before, but this one, um, Target Funding by Kedma O. Oh. This is a really good book that gives you lots of different options as to how to um, raise the money that you need to start your company. So I really recommend this one and I'm gonna write it in the chat in case you haven't um, seen me talk about it before. I have been talking about it a lot lately, so I wouldn't be surprised if you already have it and have been reading it. But um, the target funding book is super important because it gives you ideas as to how to fund your business. And I, I do like to 
um, tell everybody that, you know, you don't have to wait for your business to get funded before you start your business. Um, it's your responsibility as the business owner to make your business happen. So you can't, um, if you're not investing in your business, uh, it's very unlikely that you're going to find someone who will invest in your business because they want to usually see that you believe in your idea so much that you're making it happen. Um, so that's one big mistake I've seen a lot of people make is wait until they um, they need money or, or wait until they have the money from investors to start their business. It's actually way better if you show that you believe in your business so much that you're willing to invest in it in time and in, in hard work and, and money until you're able to get that investment that's going to take you to the next level. Um, but for sourcing, sourcing is a really important part of how you're going to be able to convince investors. And a big reason is because if you choose an ingredient that is not ready available, readily available, and it's not uh, reasonably priced, it's going to be very difficult for you to produce your product at a large scale. Uh, one example that I'll give you is um, porcini mushrooms. Um, porcini mushrooms are very rare. They're expensive. Um, and they're you know, really difficult to find a constant source. And one day I was asked to develop a sausage recipe. And I usually used to make a sausage with porcini mushrooms in small batches, but that's not the product that I chose to scale with. And the reason is because it's expensive. So if you are choosing something that you're gonna sell to the masses that you need an investment to be able to create that infrastructure, Choose something that you're going to reliably be able to get. And that's why a lot of the time when I when I talk to you, I tell you to, if you're working with a co-packer or a manufacturing facility, work with the ingredients that they have selected, that they have in-house. And one big reason is because if they have it in their inventory, it means that that type of product is something that that company has a supply of. Uh, one of the biggest issues that we have in the food industry is supply chain issues. And that especially has increased because of the pandemic, that it's been difficult to get certain ingredients. So think about your recipe. Think about your recipe and make sure that what you include in your recipe is something that you can actually get a lot of. Um, so that you don't make it so rare. I do, you know, it's nice to have a unique product as well, but in the purpose of an investor, you have to be realistic and you have to be able to realize that they will want a return on their investment, an ROI, and they will always ask you, what's my ROI? Well, a return on investment varies from business to business, obviously, but it's one of the most important things that the investors ask because they want to know how they're going to make their money back and then also be able to make a profit. So the 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 rare ingredients part of this of of your recipe might deter them. So like I said, if you look to scale for something, try to keep it simple as far as a recipe goes. And then other, as, other aspects that they're going to ask you about or other factors are, how are you going to execute your operation? So if you're looking for an investment, um, how are you going to make use of the money? What are you going to do with that money to grow your operation, to, to strengthen your business? Do you have the right systems in place? They're not going to give you funding if you have not planned how you're gonna use it and why you need it. And a lot of the time people need the funding in order to create the systems that are gonna allow them to make more of a profit. 
And that's something that the investor understands. They understand that you need to create systems in order to grow your company. So that's okay. You just have to tell them exactly where you're going to put the money. Um, and do you have records of sales? Because most uh, investors are asking for a proof of concept. So the title of today in the class today is developing your proof of concept. Your proof of concept is basically what you're doing right now. You're 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 running your business. So everything that you're doing right now, as you make your food, you sell your food, and you make money off of your food, you need to be writing down and recording it because that is your proof of concept. So right now, if you're at the scale in which you do a few, um, let's say you're selling about a hundred units of what you're what you make per month, even twenty units of what you make per month. You need to be recording that, and and make sure that you make a record of it, and try to challenge yourself. Figure out, okay, if you sold one hundred packages of a snack in September, what can you do to sell two hundred in October? What can you do to sell 400 in November? And it sounds like a lot, but really when you're looking for an investor, they want to make money with your concept with you. So they're only going to invest if they see growth. So the only way to ensure growth and get growth is by marketing and marketing and reaching out to customers. So as you market and reach out to your customers, you need to record the sales. Make sure that you're tracking how much money is coming in and how much you're keeping. And if you're not making a profit, there's a problem. And we have to find out what that problem is. And that's why you have technical assistance. So you're not alone. It's okay. Like that has happened and I've seen it happen plenty of times. But it's about being proactive about seeing the problem and solving it, not waiting. And I have noticed a lot of people look for investors because they're losing money. So they need money for it to keep their business going. And that's not what investments are meant to do. An investment is meant to allow you to grow and expand your business, not save it from going down. Because if there is a problem happening, Money is only a Band-Aid. It's, it's not gonna, it's, it's not a full cure. Um, so it's definitely a red flag if you need an investment to be able to keep your business open. Your investment needs to be so that you can expand and grow your business. So do you have sales records? That is your proof of concept. Everything that you do to, to, to record that information you just need to be able to put it in a, in a spreadsheet and make it clear to the investor that your business is growing. And then you want to have testimonials. That's why I put these little images here. Uh, testimonials are always great. Um, I think that it just shows that you have actual customers that are excited about your product. So as many customer testimonials as you can gather, the better, because then when you write your pitch deck, you can incorporate really good testimonials onto your um, presentation. And if you can get someone who is influential, someone who has some sort of uh, voice, I, I mean, I, I hope everybody has a voice, but somebody who is you know, influential in that world to give you a testimonial, that'll help you. It's just like like if you were to apply for a job and you have a resume, you usually include a recommendation from somebody um, or a, a reference. It's the same similar thing with investors. You're including a review or, or something that's gonna tell them, this is a great product. This is a product that you should invest in. 
So make sure that you're gathering all of that information as you're launching your business. So I've said a lot in the past couple of webinars about holidays. But right now it's uh, September 23rd. Um, hopefully you have your catalogs or your um, sales sheets or menus already created for the holidays. And the reason I say hopefully is because I've been mentioning it for the past uh, couple of weeks. And if you need help with developing it, schedule technical assistance time. I have time next week and the week after that. So there is available technical assistance time in my part and then from other consultants. And you wanna make sure that you have uh, that sheet put together because the holidays are gonna be one of the best times that you can use to develop your proof of concept because it's when people buy stuff. And they're gonna buy more things because it's the holidays, they wanna give gifts or they want to uh, cater an event. Uh, so it's a, really the time of the year that's the most sales potential for food businesses. So create a, a something that allows someone to know how to purchase your product and write down and record all of the sales and then take testimonials. This is a perfect time of the year to be developing your pitch deck or your proof of concept. And I just wanted to share with you a few resources. Um, and then this is something that I will email you for your, um, that I'll email you for your, just so that you have it for your information. But we have um, the live plan link that I already showed you a little bit about the live plan link. Um, and then if you do not have a website, you need to have a website. You need to have a website and you need to have social media channels. So I definitely wanted to show you about the social media channels today because it's super important that when you approach investors, you have some sort of following on social media. Um, and then Veronica, yes, you can definitely have an appointment. Um, just email, if you want an appointment with me, I'm, you should already have my email, but I'll put it in the chat again. And then I just came back from out of town. So I'm a little bit behind on my emails. Not by much. I'm almost all caught up. But if you haven't, if you emailed me and you haven't heard from me back yet, you will uh, by Monday. So we will set something up, but you have my email there. Just email me and we can schedule one on one time. But I know I see a lot of the, I see our participants here in the participants list. And I know that some of you are still developing your, um, your proof of concept um, or you're just getting started and are gonna need an investment. Um, this is why I always say that social media is so important. So you don't wanna wait until you launch your business to develop your social media you wanna make sure that you're doing it well before. So if you have a product that is a, um, a snack or something like that, and you make it by hand, um, show the story, you know, make a video of how you create your product um, because customers want to know. And that's what's gonna make people really excited to purchase from you. Um, is if they know your story and they know the story behind your um, behind your business. And any investor, the first thing that they're going to do is that they're going to um, look you up online. That's the first thing that they're going to do. And the most, you know, the reason they do that is because if you're not online, you're not the type of person that um, that prioritizes that. And the problem with not prioritizing it in, in the year 2022 is that most of all jobs, so I, I was listening to a report on NPR a few years ago, which is actually what made me as a chef go more virtual as well, uh, where they said that 80% of jobs uh, by the year 2020 
would be virtual, would be online based, and 20% of jobs would be service jobs or things that people had to do more so in the hospitality industry and in law enforcement, things that physically somebody had to be there for. But if think about it, if 80% of jobs are moving to virtual settings, that means that we're on the computer all the time. And because we're on the computer all the time, we need to prioritize social media as food businesses, because that's how we're reaching our customers. And that has good and bad implications. The good news is you can reach more people. The bad news is people are inundated. They have so much information coming at them at once. How do you make yourself different? Um, and that's really difficult. How do you differentiate yourself? So I do always encourage videos. Um, if you can make a video of your business, of your story, it will be very effective. Um, and the reason is because people do not read as much as you might think. <laughs> so videos and reels and things that are, are uh, showing what you're doing, showcasing what you're doing, are going to be more effective. Another thing that's important as you're building your business and your proof of concept is networking. Who are you associating with within the industry that gives your, um, your, your brand more, um, it, it solidifies your brand a lot more. It gives it a better reputation. So you always need to think about who you're associating with. Um, because people are going to look at who you're associated with and they're going to relate your product with that association, basically. Um, I mean, my mom always used to say it in Spanish. There's a, there's a saying in Colombia that says, dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres, which means um, tell me who you are with and I'll tell you who you are. Tell me who you walk with and I'll tell you who you are. And that's actually uh, really true in business. Um, who you associate yourself with, where you put your brand, people will associate your quality with their with the other partnerships or the other quality of the, the other businesses. So if you have, for example, a um, small business and you sell snacks or you sell desserts, I would you know, challenge you to think who has a business that I can sell my product to that already has a high, uh, you know, a great reputation because I'm going to be able to be, if, I'm, if I associate with them, I'm gonna be able to also kind of absorb that type of reputation. Um, and then I also already recommended this book to you before, but I'm gonna recommend it a hundred billion times because this is really important. Um, it's called um, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This was written in um, like 1930. It's like a very old book, but it's important because it allows you to understand how to speak to people to where they can listen. Um, and really, you, you're being respectful, but you're also associating what your sale is. You're associating your sale to their need. So at the end of the day, when you're developing a pitch deck, when you're developing one of these proof of concepts so that you can show the investor, this is what my business is and this is why it's gonna make money. You also need to tie it to whatever they value. So before you even approach an investor, you need to have done your research about them. You need to have thought, okay, who is this person? What do they think about food? What do they value in, in the world of food? So that you can figure out how you're gonna, you're gonna approach them. And then also working on your packaging and your branding is gonna be very important. Before you even approach an investor, one of the first big investments that you're gonna have to make as a business owner is in your brand, in your branding. Because when you are developing a pitch deck, it's extremely visual. You, it, it needs to look very, very inviting and very, um, 
just you have to have graphs and charts. So I'll go over that a little bit in the live plan since I'm a little ahead of schedule and I have time. Um, but the next thing that I wanted to share with you is these books. Uh, we also have social media marketing. Um, there are lots of books about social media marketing, but if you're having a, a challenge in marketing over social media, this is a really good book that explains a lot of um, a lot of tactics on how to reach more people through social media. Some some of us are different than others. So social media is really run however way is more genuine to you. Um, but your social media needs to be reflective of your brand and it needs to be really detailed and tell a story. Um, so I'm going to put this in the chat as well so that you can find it. It's called Social Media Marketing. And this one is for 2001. I don't know if um, 2021, not two, yeah, 2021. So I don't know if they have a 2022, but um, maybe, but 2021 is fine. Um, it's only a year ago. Three. So this guy is named Jeremy Priest, P-R-E-A-C-E. -E. So this book is really good too. I really recommend it. I bought it off of Amazon, but it shows me um, things that are, or strategies that are um, worth it or good to apply to your social media marketing. Um, so they're going to ask you about that as well. So I know that you're all building your business plans and you're working on, okay, how will I grow my business? But do you want an investor? Uh, so I think that the first thing you need to ask yourself is, who is your pitch deck for, or who is your proof of concept for? Um, if you're looking to, for example, qualify for this grant that is happening for um, Capital One, they're going to be more so looking at, if you looked at the uh, criteria that they had here, they're going to be making sure that you've been in business and generating, rev or generating revenue for six months and that you have earned more than $10,000 of revenue in the past uh, 12 months. So hopefully you have those sales records. Um, I got actually a question from Veronica that asked, if you want a website, do you have to have the packaging and the branding already finished, already completed? Um, you should, yes. Uh, that's kind of a, the simple answer, but you don't have to. You can be developing it. Um, you don't, it doesn't have to be finalized, but if you need help with marketing and branding and, and developing the, um, the aesthetics of your, um, of your, your business, there are lots of resources out there for you. Uh, one of them I'm going to look for actually right now while I talk to you is a branding website. Um, let me let me see if I can find it. But the branding website is you really just need to have some sort of graphic designer or somebody who understands your brand to give you that um, that guidance that you need. Um, I'm going to find. Let's see if I have it here. Um, because there's all, all these websites that I actually, it's hard to keep track of absolutely all of them, but I'm gonna actually show you one. Let's see if I can get in. And when you're doing and developing your brand, there's a few thought processes that you need to have. So you need to think through a lot of different things. And that's why I do recommend working with somebody who is an expert at marketing and branding because marketing and branding is all about, um, marketing and branding is all about your way of communicating your thoughts to, or your your brand or your, your product to your customer. So let me see actually if I can, I have it here. 
let's see. Do, do, do. I don't have it in this one, but I know I have it. So I'm going to keep looking for it. But yes, you should definitely have your marketing and branding developed. If you need a connection, we have marketing, um, we have marketing experts at the um, Small Business Development Center, and they can help you in developing your brand. But you want to make sure that your brand is up to date and that it competes with the other um, the other sources for um, that it competes with other places, I guess, or, or other types of companies that sell your same type of product. That's what I mean. Um, let me see if I can click this. I wanted to share something with you, but I can't find it right now, but it was a printed packaging resource um, that I was recommending at another webinar that I opened up. Um, and then Charles Mott from the DC SBDC recommended it to me. Um, so we do have partnerships in the DCSBDC in marketing and branding, but just because I can't, I'm not good at multitasking as it, as it, um, for webinars, because I'm trying to talk to my computer and coming up with this information. So I'll send that separately. Um, I think that would be better. Um, so I'll send that separately in another email, actually, for the branding resource, but I think it's called like brand, I forget what it's called, like brand marquee or something. It has an interesting name. And what it does is that it takes you through the exercise of how to develop your, um, your brand in a way that's very comprehensive. It is a paid program. I believe it's like um, something like $400 for the, um, for the basic program, but it, it, did look very, very great when I took a look at it. Um, but we also have workshops. So the DCSBDC at Howard University um, has workshops on how to develop your brand. And that's a free, um, free resource right there. Um, and all you have to do is go in and a, lot of, a few of you are part of that program already. But don't forget that you can actually go into the DCSBDC and you can sign up for workshops. And I think a few of you have already met Stacy Palmer or uh, Stephanie Magnus, and they're both our branding experts. And then for me, I love to help with branding. I just really need more, you know, a heads up before we start so I can give you a better feedback. Um, so I'm gonna share this with you right now so that you can see what's up. All right, so this is, not what I was looking for originally, but then I decided to find it, um, the events and workshops class. So you can see that the DCSBDC has over uh, 200, it gave over 200 classes this year. I think it was 220 free classes this year. And all of these are taught by um, experts within the industry. So I recommend thinking, for example, this one is gonna be on September 28th. And this is a class on design thinking for entrepreneurs. So this is gonna be something that is a, that's a really interesting class for people who want to understand media and how media looks at your, how, how to reflect your brand through different forms of media. So that one is very great. You have also marketing tools for your business. Um, then the food business ones, I'm not as focused on marketing and branding because it takes it takes a long time to develop a brand or um, how how someone's going to perceive your your product. So it does take development. There are different tricks that we use depending on your product. So if your product is more of a natural, uh, locally sourced, natural, healthy product, there are certain colors that you're gonna wanna stick to that are what the customer perceives as healthy. If your product is more, more vibrant and tropical and fruity, then you're gonna use different colors. 
if it's like a fast food restaurant, then you're going to use very vibrant colors to get people very hungry very quickly. Um, so there are colors that you want to incorporate into your logo. Um, and so as you develop your logo, as you develop your brand, you want to work with somebody who understands the psychology behind that. But we already pointed out two in September that will work for you. This one right here on October 12th, personal branding in 2023 is super important. Um, I think, I don't know who's teaching this one. Um, we have a few. So Gigi McMillan, she's actually super, um, super experienced. So you have this personal branding one is super important. I'm actually going to take it as well because I know that I'm always looking to strengthen my personal brand, but personal branding for a food business is extremely important because nowadays um, customers are more prone to invest in you, the business owner, than in the product itself. We're so, we have so many products in the market that when you're the CEO, when you're the leader of your business, you need to work on your personal branding as well so that you can you know, deliver your pitch. Because like I said before, most likely they're going to be investing in you as the business owner, not necessarily your product, even though you want to have product samples. So just to kind of go over for Veronica's question, do you need a website or does your website need to have the um, the type of the packaging and the branding completed before you launch your website. And then, so my simple answer is you should, yes, because consistency is important, but today we're talking about proof of concept. So if you can make sales, even without having completed the branding, then make the sales because the most important part is money. It, it really is. The most important part is making the sales. So you don't stop sales just because you don't have your branding perfected. And branding takes time to evolve um, and to develop. I know a few of you have been working, just as I look at the participants, a few of you have been working on revamping your, your, your logo, making it different colors, or coming up with a, a different shape for your labels. So you know that that's an ongoing process. So you make the sale if you can make the sale. But when you're developing your website, your website needs to be a reflection of your product. So everything in branding is about consistency. So your product has to look like your website. You have to reflect your, your product whenever you're selling it. Um, in the same way that you're reflecting it in your website or the same way you're reflecting it in when you're person to person. And that comes with having a good website designer. And if you need help with that, we have counselors that will help you. At the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, we have um, Carlos. And Carlos, uh, I forgot Carlos's last name, uh, but he will help you develop the website Veronica, um, Carlos Martin del Campo, and he speaks Spanish too, and he helps develop websites. So I would recommend if you are looking for that, he can help you with the branding, he can help you with the graphic design, and he can help you with the website. So all you have to do is email me and I will team you up with him. And that's a free service that is given by the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and it's funded by the SBA. So that would be who I would team you up with. So all you have to do is email me and I'll make that connection. But make sure that you're going to these. Um, so I know a lot of you sign up for these all the time, but if you need help with branding and marketing, go to these because we have so many resources for it. And that is, although I work on it for the food business, that is not my, I'm not, a, that's not my expertise. My expertise is in the food business side and in getting investors for the concepts. Um, all right, and if they say that you need to be a DC-based business, let me know, because if you're selling in DC, um, you're a DC business. So we are gonna work on that. So just reach out to me and then I'll make the connection. That, that was completely fine. 
Uh, you can always get a counselor at the DCSBDC if you do business in DC. Um, and then you can also tap into other SBDCs if you're based and located in other places. So the small business development centers always help all of the businesses that approach us. Um, and if you're, this area is kind of interesting because you have Maryland, DC, and Virginia. Um, but if you live outside of DC and you're doing business in DC, you can still get technical assistance. So that is, um, that's important to note. All right, so we have about 15 minutes left. I went over a few workshops that I definitely want you to tap into. And I'm gonna go back a little bit to the live plan because the live plan has the library. So just remember that you have a sample plan library here. And if you're looking to do your pitch deck, uh, just make sure that you're looking at the sample plan library of how do they um, how do they write their business plans in the sample plan library? And what are the key points that you, whenever you observe a business plan, where are the key points that you look at? So one of the most important parts of the uh, business plan is the introduction. The sample plan library will give you introductions. You have a, the executive summary, will explain what your business is, then you're going to talk about what products and services you have. So it needs to be short. Your pitch deck is going to be a condensed version of your business plan. And this is something that we're going to be able to help you with through the DCSBDC. And then also um, SCORE is another free program that's local that helps you with your pitch deck. And whenever you schedule your one-on-one -on -one assist technical assistance time, and we help you create your pitch deck. We're also gonna coach you in how to present your product or your pitch, your, your proof of concept basically to the investors. But take a look if you can at live plan, go to the sample plan library and look at the executive summary um, portion of the, the business plan, because you're gonna be able to see how they write their introductions, how they explain the company, how they explain the products and services, and how they talk about the marketplace, where you're selling, so that you can then give them all of the financial considerations that they need to be able to make their decision on whether or not they're going to invest in you. Another key point that they put here that I like is that they put the mission. Um, you have to have a clear vision of your company. So if you have a clear vision of your company, you also know what your mission is going to be. You know what you're going to um, want to accomplish with your company. So are you using the sales to support any non-for-profit groups? Or um, what is the, the incentive behind your product or selling your product for the customer? Do you have one? Um, you know, sometimes it can be that it's a high quality product. Sometimes it can be that you support local farms or that you source uh, fair trade ingredients. But all of those little um, differentiations, the things that make your product special, you need to clearly communicate it in your, um, in your business plan and in your pitch. So the live plan is gonna be very helpful because it's going to help you put through all of the different, all of the different parts. So if you need help, let me know. Um, I do recommend this program, and then if not, then you're just going to have to make a, um, a slideshow yourself with those key parts. Your proof of concept is, are you making money? So my question to you is, do you have existing sales? Um, and have you been open for more than six months and selling? Because if you do, then you can qualify for this Capital One grant and we can help you through developing your pitch deck. And if you don't, um, look up a, I guess, create a sales plan with milestones for yourself. So we have the holidays coming up. You should all have a sales sheet. If you don't have a sales sheet, um, let me know and we'll schedule the technical assistance time to 
go over your sales sheet because that's going to be extremely important for you to be able to um, to make the money that you need in order to prove your concept by the end of the year because this is the most important part of the year as a you know as far as sales goes. Um, and then I'm just going to go over one more thing because we're almost done. Um, I also want to talk about managing objections. So when you are pitching your business plan, you're most likely going to have challenges. You're going to have a lot of people telling you, what if, um, for example, the, the pandemic, what if a pandemic happens? Or what if like they they'll they'll probably give you a few different scenarios like what if a pandemic happens or what if you lose your your key players or the people that you've you've hired your team what are you going to do um so that's why you really need the coaching through how to develop your um your approach but i'm going to send all of you this presentation and what i want you to do is Look at these questions and fill it out. So this is your homework. You're gonna look at these questions and you're gonna fill it out and say, what need are you filling? So your need, you're gonna have to have a, a SWOT analysis to understand what need you're filling in the market. What is your product? Who is your customer? And what I want you to do is think about who your target demographic is, and if you need help with that, then schedule technical assistance time because if you have a product, you really should know who you're gonna sell to. So who is your customer? And then how will you market to them? And answer that and schedule technical assistance time so we can talk about it and start creating a document that answers these questions. And that is your pitch deck. That's what your pitch deck is going to be. So I'm gonna email this to all the participants today. If you would like to complete a pitch deck, schedule technical assistance time, we'll finish it up. All you need to do is answer these questions before you schedule time with me. Uh, don't, you know, do it to the best of your ability, but make use of the time that we have one-on-one -on -one by exercising the thoughts before we meet so that we can then just talk about them. So I'm gonna send this to you and fill this out and then also bring your logo. So if you have already a business that you've developed a brand for or you've developed a logo and you're looking to strengthen your brand, bring it to the meeting because we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna analyze it. And then if I think that you might need more support, I'll team you up with somebody who, who's an expert at graphic design to try to help you strengthen that. Um, but really that's ultimately your decision. The business owner decides what they want to reflect. So that's all your decision, but all I'll do is give you my recommendations and team you up with somebody who can help you. And then make sure that you have these answers filled out as well. Is your vendor someone that's responsive? Um, do you have a certain ingredient that you need to grow your business with? And if so, where are you gonna get it from? Um, I think a lot here about chocolate. Uh, the reason I think about chocolate is because I know these businesses that are here today and most of you guys use chocolate. And chocolate is a difficult ingredient to source. So find out what exact type of chocolate you need and where are you going to get it from. And if you don't know how you're going to grow, then that's when we start working with the purveyors and finding out, okay, how are we going to secure that we're able to grow this business with this ingredient? So I know that for a fact that some of you have ingredients like this. So when you're building your business plan, you're thinking toward growth meaning we need to come up with this now so that you can get the funding to help you later on as you grow your business, um, as you're managing production. Um, so please answer all of these questions. That's why I put them in the slides. I really did it to help navigate you toward 
what information you need in a pitch deck. And what we will do next is in technical assistance time, create your pitch deck um, because that's gonna be probably the most important tool aside from your actual business plan that you need in order to, um, in order to work with investors. So the next class that we have um, scheduled, and I thank you all for being here, by the way. Um, and I wanna talk just for a second about the next class that we have scheduled. So the Dreaming Out Loud program that you're here at today, uh, this is a program that's geared toward allowing you or giving you the tools that you're gonna need in order to qualify for, um, for funding and, and, and help you with growth. So you might not be an existing business and we're here to help you get there. And if you are an existing business, we're here to help you grow. So the last one we talked about was just how to start your food business. So what thought process do you need before you open a food business? Today, we talked about developing a proof of concept, which I'm gonna email you all this presentation so that you can answer these questions. The proof of concept is basically whether or not your product sold. And did you record that information? You needed the, to find out how, how much you have in sales, uh, how many, who your customer was, and how you marketed it to them. Um, and then the next one is going to be research and development for an innovative menu. So if you do, if you have a product but you still want to develop it further, you want to come to that class. And if you have a, a restaurant or a catering company, uh, you really want to come to that class because restaurants and catering companies, the food is dependent on market demand. So it's dependent on what people are looking for or what's trending at the moment. So we're gonna talk about that in the next class on how do you look at those trends and, and be able to capitalize and stay on top of those trends so that you're also growing um, as time moves forward, because there is something that happens in the food industry, which is that things get outdated. So if you're looking to be competitive in the food industry, you need to be innovating. You need to do a lot of research and development. So we're going to talk about exercises for research and development and product development in the next class. And then after that, we're going to talk about hiring and training for food businesses. Um, so then after we decide, okay, what is the product list that we're going to have? How do we hire the right people to help us put it together? Um, so how do you select who to even hire? So we'll talk about that next. So don't forget to sign up in the Eventbrite, go to the classes that you can go to. And if um, you can't make the class, they will be posted on YouTube. Um, the class from yesterday is going to be on, it already was sent for approval, so hopefully it'll be on YouTube in a couple of days, and as soon as it's on YouTube, we'll send out an email to let you all know that it's up there, um, but even so, um, I'm going to email this over to everyone who has registered. If you haven't registered in the Eventbrite, um, I'm not going to be able to email it to you, so Anyone who has registered in the Eventbrite will receive this presentation. And please schedule your technical assistance and then we'll do it together. So that's really it for today. Uh, hopefully you thought, you, you thought through the presentation, you listened to the questions that you have to be asking yourself. Uh, this was really developed based on experience. Um, uh, you know, these are the things that every single investor have asked me along the years. They always ask the same things. So this is what they look at. So hopefully it was helpful. And if you do have an investor that you would like to approach now, feel free to call me, ask me to, to, to help you through it before you go out there, because it really is one of those things that um, you get one or two opportunities to do it uh, before before you can't. So um, you need to be prepared. So preparation is the key. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to just stick around a little bit for the end of this presentation. And I hope to see you next class. But thank you so much for being here. I know it's a Friday. 
So I hope you have a wonderful weekend and that you get to rest a little bit. Um, and then that's it, really. That's it for today. But thank you.